Hi, uh, I'm Eleanor Scott and this topic is about early pregnancy. I'm Professor of Diabetes and Maternal Health at the University of Leeds and also Leeds Teaching Hospitals NHS Trust. Here are my disclosures. So the learning objectives from this topic, we're going to cover what to expect with diabetes at the start of pregnancy, the benefits and also the frustrations of using continuous glucose monitoring, and how to start moving towards time in range pregnancy goals. So what to expect with diabetes at the start of pregnancy? Well, this is the um, very first bit of pregnancy when baby's developing, so between weeks one and 12. It's a time of great change and it can feel very unfamiliar. Um, it's actually also very stressful, uh, worrying about the effect of glucose uh, and the effect that it's having on baby. And we know that glucose values are hugely variable at this stage, but please be reassured this is actually normal. There's also an increased tendency towards hypos without the usual warning signs. Uh, and as a result, it's not unusual for women to have to drop their insulin requirements at this stage in pregnancy. So um, as soon as you uh, find out that you are pregnant, our recommendations are that you actually contact your diabetes team direct. Uh, as soon as you've had your positive pregnancy test, rather than wait uh, through going through the GP referral process. And the reason for that is because actually that can take longer and your diabetes and pregnancy team would like to see you as soon as possible, as soon as you know you're pregnant. Once you are seen, you will expect to have a booking appointment with your midwife and they will organise for you to get some scans of baby. So the initial scan is an early reassurance scan, also known as a viability scan. Um, and then you'll get a, another one later on, the dating scan, which will more accurately say how many weeks pregnant you are. Um, also, from your diabetes team, you can expect your first retinal screening appointment and also appointments every one to two weeks with your diabetes in pregnancy team. And during that, they'll review your glucose readings, they'll look at your insulin doses, HbA1c, they'll check your urine and blood pressure. So how can continuous glucose monitoring help at the start of pregnancy? Well, it helps you to spot changes in glucose early and it allows you to respond to these changes earlier. And as a result, it can help you stop your glucose being so variable. It's really good at helping you to avoid hypos and as a result can give you the confidence to alter your insulin safely. So compared to finger prick tests, what are the benefits of using continuous glucose monitoring? Well, it allows you to track your glucose levels all through the day and night, and you can see what your levels are at times when you wouldn't normally be testing. So for example, during the night. Generally, it means that you don't need to do quite as many painful finger prick checks, although you will still need to do some. And it can really help you to tailor your insulin doses more carefully. It can help you reduce hypos because you're going to be able to see a downward trend in your glucose before you actually go hypo, which means that you'll be able to do something about it. And on top of that, continuous glucose monitoring allows you to set alarms to let you know if your glucose is uh, high or going too low. But there are frustrations of using continuous glucose monitoring. So it's really not that unusual to get overloaded with the data, which can actually confuse or worry you, particularly early in pregnancy if you're new to using continuous glucose monitoring. You will still need to do some finger prick checks, particularly if, you, if your uh, continuous glucose monitoring suggests your hypo, you will need to check to verify that. You may find wearing the sensor unsightly or irritating, and the alarms, if they're going off too often, as is often the case early in pregnancy, you may find that a bit annoying. It also requires motivation to use the data in order to get the best out of it. So where do we start? Emma's already mentioned about the glucose roller coaster, and we're moving from glucose values that are hugely variable, so mountains and valleys, towards something a lot smoother, more hills. And you can see with the glucose tracers how that might look on continuous glucose monitoring as you smooth things out. So compared to finger prick monitoring, it's really a very different way of thinking about your glucose. 
Um, you're going to be aiming now for a pregnancy glucose range of between 3.5 and 7.8 millimole per litre. And you're going to be looking at, spend, at how much time you're spending within that range. And you're going to be aiming towards 70%, so two thirds or just over two thirds of your time within that range. Now we know that that's a big ask. Okay, so it's really important that you realise that each 5% increase in time and range from wherever you set off improves the chances of the pregnancy going well and baby being healthy. But in order to move towards doing this, then you're going to need to look at your CGM glucose regularly. Um, it's also important to say don't panic with the occasional high readings and they can go quite high. Uh, this is going to happen, uh, so please be reassured that we don't expect anything awful to happen as a result of the odd one off. Uh, it's much more a pattern of glucoses than trying to get them to come down that we're after. So what does time in range actually look like when you're doing continuous glucose monitoring? So these traces show uh, somebody who's got time in range of 47%, the top graph, versus somebody who's moving towards getting the time in range of 82% here on the bottom graph. And you can see that within the two target levels, how much of the glucose readings are sort of flattening out and falling within that. So how do you actually gradually increase the amount of time in range? Well, let's take one of the commonest problems, which is a uh, peak uh, glucose associated with having breakfast. So you can see from this that um, you're spending more time out of range immediately after eating breakfast. So how do we tackle that? Well, there are lots of factors involved in your glucose at this time. Everything from your choice of food, so whether you're going for uh, low carbohydrate or high carbohydrate meals, and also the uh, glycemic index of that. Whether or not at this stage in pregnancy you're feeling morning sickness, uh, because that can also um, have an effect. Um, it's not unusual as well, uh, early in pregnancy, to feel more stress and anxiety first thing in the morning, partly because of morning sickness, but also you're not actually um, often sharing the fact you're pregnant with anybody or at, uh, particularly work colleagues, for instance, and that can put your glucose levels up. We also know it's to do with your insulin amount that you're taking and also how accurate your carb counting is. Um, we know that it's influenced by insulin timing and also any activity that you've just taken or might be taking after. So we've learnt from using continuous glucose monitoring that timing is everything. And when you bolus your insulin before meals is really important. And we're learning that in the early stage of pregnancy you need to bolus 20 minutes before food. The reason for this is shown on the, on the graph here. Uh, and I've highlighted with the red arrow um, what... Uh, the glucose would be at an hour, where the peak glucose is. And you can see with the top two graphs how much higher the glucose level goes if you're bolusing at the meal start or even 20 minutes after the meal. And it, so it goes up high and it stays up higher for longer. But if you're taking the insulin 20 minutes before, it's already starting to work at the time that you're absorbing your food. And so it has this advantage of really smoothing it out, not letting you get too high a peak, and also, generally, uh, you, it becomes a much flatter profile. So you're moving towards these hills. Early pregnancy is a time when you're going to get a lot of hypos. They're really common. You may not get your usual warning signs, and they happen faster. And it's, you often need to reduce your insulin at this stage in pregnancy. So one of the other really common patterns we see on continuous glucose monitoring is where you have a hypo and then end up over treating it and you then get a high. So one of the things that you can do using continuous glucose monitoring is tackle that so that you're trying to stop the hypo actually happening. And there are two ways in which we do this. So one of the ways is that you can use the trend arrows on your CGM to prevent the hypos. So as a rule of thumb, if your glucose is reading six or less, uh, and the arrow's pointing down, it means that you're going to need a small carbohydrate top-up to try and stop you going hypo. So an example here, uh, if your arrow's straight down, then it may be that you take four to five grams of carbohydrate, which would be one jelly baby. And if it's two arrows down, two jelly babies. The other way that you can reduce, uh, uh, stop yourself going hypo is by using the alarms. So these are useful if your hypo warnings are not so good. 
Um, however, because you are getting so many more hypos at the start of pregnancy, you may find these a bit annoying uh, and actually need to switch them off uh, at this stage. If you are using them, however, then use the predicted low alert um, and then you can take a small amount of carbohydrate to prevent you going hypo. Um, you can also use the low alarm and make sure that you actually have hypo treatment around so that you're able to treat that. The other thing that's worth saying that if you are uh, low on your CGM, then do verify it on a finger prick and check you actually hypo before you treat and that helps avoid over-treating as well. And also don't forget the time lag that uh, Emma mentioned in her module uh, because if your CGM glucose shows that you're hypo uh, and the arrow's pointing down, it may actually mean that you're out by about two millimoles of glucose. So what are the changes that women make? Um, generally, at this stage in pregnancy, it's timing of the mealtime bolus, so at least 20 minutes before meals. Uh, meal choices, Jeannie's going to talk about this more in her module, but basically it's a change to low carbohydrate and low glycemic index meals. Make changes by preventing hypos through using the trend arrows and the alarms, and then use small carbohydrate top-ups to stop the hypos happening. And also that helps to reduce the overtreatment of hypos. So the le learning outcomes from this topic are that glucose values are hugely variable at the start of pregnancy with a greater tendency towards hypos. Um, that CGM helps you to reduce the variability by helping you to manage hypos better and that this helps you move towards the pregnancy time and range goals. So many thanks and I hope you found this useful.